let's finish this frame. I just got the new backbone in from Oshcut, OSHcut.com. They offer laser cutting services for tubes. Now, I totally could have done this myself, but I figure if I can get laser cut accuracy and not lift a muscle, then why not? I have to do a couple things to this thing before I weld it in. The holes here are pretty sharp from the laser cutting. There are wires, brake lines, and throttle cable coming through these two pass-throughs, actually three pass-throughs here, and you put that sharp corner up against those cables plus vibration, it'll cut through. So I went ahead and massaged all of these so they're super smooth. And to start, I'm gonna go in and weld the gas tank bungs in, and then I'm gonna turn it down to match the outer diameter of that to the inner diameter of the tank mounting tabs themselves. Well, these are nice and clean, but they're not perfectly round. And I might make this mistake of just going back over it real quick with the welder. Oh yeah, she's close. Almost ready to start tacking things up, except not exactly. It looks like everything's fit up really well, and it's pretty close, but there's a little bit more to go. Like this bridge, for example, which will connect these two tubes and include the seat post that goes through here. There's a little bit of a gap, and these holes actually bolt into here so that it's perfectly straight and rigid and something else to mount to. And uh, th there's a little bit of a gap, so I'm going to check and see what's up. And I can kind of see there's a little bit of a gap here, but there's not a gap on the back side. So clearly these are out a little bit. Strong tack here and another one on the back side here. And that should keep me locked in place so that I can kind of move this around. Cause there's always like a little bit of pushing and pulling and rubbing that you gotta do. gonna send it. One big pack, top dead center here, and that'll lock this into this, and I'll be able to clamp this down without fear of this moving. So it looks like we have a little bit of a gap here, but not exactly. It's just a little bit of deflection in the tubes from manual tube bending and it not being absolutely perfect, but starting here, I know these are locked in straight, and then I moved here, clamped these in, tacked them in. I know that this is straight, and this is now tacked in and locked in. All I gotta do is pull this in just a little bit, tack it, then we're good to go.
just gonna check again, over and over and over and over again. So I'm gonna tack one side in here and seam up the inside, and then I'll put the other side in and tack that, and at least I'll have one inside seam done because it's gonna be difficult to reach inside of here. Well, the camera shut off and I was in the zone and I welded it all up. But since I've welded it up, it means that there has been some heating forces that pull all of these things in various directions. Now, they're locked into position, but there is some tension on all of these positions due to welding. So I'm going to stress relieve this frame. It's just mild steel, it's not gonna hurt it. Somebody might disagree with me, but basically, what I do is I help, I'm gonna heat it up here, and here, and here, and that should let the metal settle. All right, we're back. It's all cooled off, and I realized that I didn't make a video before of when I released these clamps. There was a little bit of a lift in here, and I'm hoping to have reduced that with the heating of these tubes. Now, I don't think that I really got these tubes hot enough, but it, should still have some effect. So we're gonna take this off and see if that lift still exists. Now, if there is some lift, it's not the end of the world because I still have to weld something in between here and connect it to the backbone, essentially. And so there's gonna be more heating and more welding. And at the end of the day, there's always gonna be some movement in these tubes. I'm just trying to minimize that as much as I can at the end of the day. All right, so there's a little bit. It looks like less than an eighth, maybe a 32nd so there's a little bit more lift in this side than there is in this side, and there's always gonna be a little bit of movement, and I still have to weld a piece in between here that will eventually connect to here, and so it's all gonna move again, and there's always gonna be some movement. The main concern is that this area doesn't move, and that area doesn't move. Right now, this is locked in, and that's not really gonna move. So I'm just gonna take this out and see if there's any like major tweaking so so far so good that's pretty decent I can see a little bit of a gap opening here. Not so much on this side. It's a little tight, let's see if I pull it out. It doesn't really move in or out. It's, that's a pretty tight fit. Pretty happy with that. Now, the question I have for myself is, do I go ahead and move this over here now if I do that, I'll have to put, I can clamp these axle plates here, and then I can run the axle through the axle slots behind it, I think. Let's just go set it up and I'll show you what I mean. That is slotted in there, but one of the calculations I didn't make is that if I slide it forward, this is gonna come up out of here. These, because of this piece right here, basically it's raising this whole thing. And I am not touching the axle plate from here to here on this side. This side I am because of the brake stay feature. And I'm gonna have to weld this somehow, some way, at some point, and I'm trying to decide if I do that 
now, and it's already really locked in. All, all I'm doing is adding heat and it's not gonna affect this angle. It's not gonna affect this angle and it shouldn't affect any deflection here. Um, I'm wondering if I just go ahead and get that done or if I wait until after. I'm gonna think about it for a second. So obviously I decided to weld this first and I want to address that all of the welds on this frame so far are root welds, which is the first pass. And then I'm gonna make a second pass as a cap weld. And when I move this axle plate back into position, this side has to have a cap weld and then I'm gonna lock it back into position and then I'm gonna fit up the seat post and all of the other pieces that have to go on the frame. And then I will do a final cap weld on everything before the frame is finished and take it out of the jig and all that stuff. So I'm gonna let this cool down, I have a phone call, and then I'm gonna come back and do a cap weld on the inside of these plates, move it back into position and move on to the seat post. Well, that all went back into place exactly as it was supposed to. I didn't really expect that it would or it wouldn't, but you try and mitigate all the little things that you do in between each step to try and keep that from happening, whether I did that or it was just gonna happen anyway, I don't really know, but again, trying to take all the right steps along the way and try and manage the outcome. So, so far so good. The next step, we gotta put the seat post bridge, which basically connects these two frame rails and positions the seat post to go up into here. And that is where I did a little bit of cool design work. But that's gonna come in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe.